Hello everyone, in this tutorial series, we're going to write a bot to automate controls in a PS4 game. It took me quite some time to figure this out and I hope this will help anyone that is looking for the solution. This tutorial will also be on my website in written format in case you want to follow it at your own pace after this video. First we need PS4 Remote Play, so before you continue you will need to download it from their website and install it if you don't have it yet. It is free and official so we don't have to worry about firmware updates in the future. Before we start coding, there's a few things that need to be explained. Our goal is to find a way to feed inputs to remote play, and since it only allows DualShock 4 controllers, the easiest way I can think of is to figure out how it receives inputs from the controller so that we can fake it. In this diagram, we have remote play along with its DLL file. Together, they are responsible for reading inputs from the controller and then forwards it to the PS4. The way that the signal data is sent is through a file stream, which uses read file function from kernel32.dll. Reading a file on a hardware might sound weird, but it is actually part of the standard of USB devices that allows developers to read the input buffer from the driver. So we are going to intercept where remote player received the raw data from the controller and then replace with our own data that we can control by code. But I have to warn you that the downside of this method is that the DualShock controller must be plugged in at all times. Since we are using C-Sharp, there's a library that does the heavy lifting for us called EasyHook. Luckily, EasyHook has a tutorial project that does exactly what we need, so let's start with that and modify it as we go. Go to their website in the tutorial section and select the second one. This demo project will intercept a running process and log the information from three functions in kernel32.dll. This includes create file w, read file, and write file. We will only use the read file function for this project. You can always refer back to the tutorial and documentation of EasyHook for more details. To download the project, scroll down to the bottom of the tutorials page and you will see a link to GitHub. Either download or clone the tutorial project then open the solution file. Before we can compile the project, we need to restore the packages from NuGet. Type NuGet into Quick Launch and select Package Manager Console. Then click on Restore. Now we should be able to compile and run the project. To monitor an existing process, we have to give the program the PID. A quick way to find the PID is by using Task Manager. Find the remote play process and right click on it, then select go to details. In this case, my PID is 41880. If we input the PID into the prompt, we can now see that it is reading data from the controller. Also, notice that the file name is empty and has a size of 64 bytes. Now we have the data, but we don't really know the meaning of the values. But after searching on Google, I found this wiki page that contains the USB protocol of PS4 controllers. And if we scroll down, we can see the format of the data. In this table, the rows represents the index of the data array, and the columns represents each bit within a single byte. On the top, there is also a preview of how the data might look like in hex format. The size is 64 bytes as we expected, and the first byte will always be 1, which indicates the report ID at index 0. So if we want our bot to move forward, we can look up the control in the table for left analog Y axis. And from the table, we need to set the second index to 0 to move up. We can now go back to our project in Visual Studio and try to manipulate the data. First, we need to get rid of the console outputs simply by commenting these lines in serverinterface.cs. If we skip this step, it will affect the program's performance.
Next, go into injection entry point.cs and scroll down until you find the read file hook section. Then click on the plus button to expand. We are going to remove everything in this try catch block except for these three lines which will give us the name of the file we are reading from. Then we need to check if the file name is empty by using string.isno or whitespace and also make sure that the size is exactly 64 bytes. To modify the data, we need to access the variable LP buffer as an array, but it has a type of in pointer. So we need to convert that into something that C# -sharp can access. To do that, we need to create an unsafe code block. This will give us an error right away, and to get rid of it, we need to enable that in our project properties by right-clicking on the project in the Solution Explorer and select Properties. In the Build tab, check on Allow Unsafe Code for both debug and release builds like so. Within the unsafe block, we can convert the in pointer into a raw byte array which allow us to manipulate a native array in C -sharp. This can be done by casting the pointer into a raw byte pointer. From now, we can access the wearable like a normal byte array. Just to make sure, we verify that our report ID at index 0 is equal to 1. And now, this is where it is safe to inject our data. So the last thing we need to do now is assign 0 at index 2 to make the bot move forward. Now we can compile and run the program again. This time, the program will replace the data instead of blocking it and the bot should walk forward as we expected. To stop the injection, simply stop the program. We can also make it move backwards by changing it to 255 which is the maximum value of a byte. To keep this video short, I decided to make only a simple proof of concept video as an introduction rather than writing an actual bot. In the next part, we will take what we learned from this video and create an actual application with our own UI. This project will be available on GitHub which you can find the link in the description. You can also follow me on social media, links are in the description as well. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.